When a recipe calls for an egg, it's going to be a large egg unless otherwise specified, and that's the standard for the industry for cookbook writing and article writing. But if a recipe calls for a large egg, it's no longer necessarily the right size because they tend to weigh different amounts within the 12 eggs that come in a crate. So it's important if you don't weigh the eggs after you've broken it to at least measure the volume of it. Now, if the egg is cold, it won't beat well, and the whites won't beat well. So what I like to do is to put it in a bowl of hot water, and you just put it in to cover, set the timer for five minutes, and it will be room temperature. And this is a wonderful little tip I learned from Julia Child many years ago. And these are the kinds of tips that make a huge difference in what you do and that I really cherish. As far as separating eggs, a lot of people, and I used to, hit the eggs on the corner of the bowl, but it doesn't separate clean, it doesn't break cleanly that way. So I found that if you have a, a paper towel on the counter to keep neat, and you hit it on the counter, you get a much better break. And then you use your thumbs to separate the shell, and just drop it in the egg separator. Now I personally prefer using my hands because then I have total control, but you can see that when an egg is this fresh, the yolk is going to stay with the white firmly around it, so it takes a few minutes, for, or a few seconds anyway, for the whites to come off. And I put the, the yolks in one bowl, and the whites I'm going to measure. And one white should be two tablespoons, though these days the whites tend to be larger and the yolks smaller. So you may end up having to, say for recipe calls for five yolks, you may need to eat, even add seven or eight. That's what a difference it makes. Now here's how I do it by hand. And if you feel more comfortable separating eggs to be sure that you can control it and not have any yolk in the white, do it when they're cold and then let them sit. I would cover the whites with plastic wrap, but the yolks I spray with a nonstick cooking spray because if they crust over, you'll lose a lot of them and the mixture won't be as smooth. See, so you get the entire yolk and sometimes I'll take off the coliza. If I'm making lemon curd, I'm going to strain it so it won't be in there anyway and it doesn't really make any difference. So I'm just going to spritz it with a little of, the, of this and then it's fine to sit for an hour even. But with the whites, you never want any grease at all anywhere near it because the, even a touch of grease will prevent them from foaming. And when you're trying to get stiffly beaten eggs You'll never get them with any grease, either in the bowl or in the white itself. So say the egg was a little old and you got a drop of yolk, because when eggs are old, it's very easy to break the yolk when you're separating the eggs. The shell itself is the best way to remove it, because the shell is somehow like a magnet. It will pull it right out. But you have to be sure that you get 100% of it out. If you don't, the whites won't beat right, and then you should just use it for scrambled eggs. And there you have it, the whole story about using eggs and cake baking. <laughs>